Hi friends, this is Marilyn from tarotclarity.com. My business entity name is Tarot Clarity LLC. And today's video is a continuation of the playlist I began uh, recently regarding publishing houses that um, publish historic tarot decks. Uh, I will focus on the cards. I was just told that every now and then I'm, I have to, you know, appear on screen. I don't like appearing on screen because I'm not particularly photogenic, um, but it's something I'm told I have to do, so I'm doing it. But I'm going to shift the focus now to the cards, so give me a second. So today's focus uh, is going to be on the U.S. Game Systems, Inc. publishing house and their... Um, their decks, which are um, historic. Now, we can't discuss U.S. Game Systems, Inc. without acknowledging the huge debt um, that we have to Stuart R. Kaplan for cataloging hundreds of years' worth of tarot decks, old and new. Um, and so, you know, uh, it, it, particularly with this... Uh, encyclopedic set. I mean, um, where would we be without it? If you ever, you know, want to know about any decks that exist, you know, come here first, you know, come to this encyclopedia, you know, and, and, and find it that, you know, you're going to find it here before you'll find it anywhere. Um, in fact, if you're not, you know, if you don't own a, a, a set, you know, go to the library and, you know, use it for some of your research, and I certainly would be more than happy to look up decks if anyone, you know, asks me to look up a deck, you, you know, I'd be happy to peruse these volumes to see if I could find whatever you're looking for. Um, so I do want to start this video out by saying that, you know, on the one hand, U.S. Game Systems, Inc. pretty much is an authority on historic tarot decks by virtue of the information contained in these four volumes. Now, having said all that, it surprised me when I went through my collection, and I probably have 150 tarot decks published by um, U.S. Game Systems, Inc., that there were so few that I would consider historic tarot decks, um, which, considering that, you know, the four volumes by Kaplan is the quintessential authority I don't seem to have too many decks by them that are historic, or what I would consider historic. The first one that I want to uh, show you about show you is the Carrie Yale Visconti deck. Um, it is obviously one of the oldest tarot decks that exists that we are aware of, and um, it's a facsimile production. It comes with a nice book which has quite a bit of information. It makes you aware of the cards that still survive to this day and the cards that they recreated and cards that may have come from, you know, elsewhere, like virtue, like a virtue card rather than a queen card, for example, if they substituted a virtue card for queen card, if it was an extended deck or whatever. Um, this deck is a facsimile deck, meaning that it's photographed um, the card in its current condition and so the cards are what like 600 years old um you know almost 600 years old so there's a lot of wear and tear on these existing cards um you know this, these cards that i'm showing you here are particularly easy to make out you get a sense of their glory but then you come across a card like this you know where um you know this was originally silver and it still is but it's tarnished silver and so, you know, it's it's not as glorious to look at, kind of dirty, right? You know, some of the cards you can still kind of make out. You can see some of the detail. But it's not like a deck that like Los Scarabeo put out, which I showed in another video when I focused on Los Scarabeo. Um, the Madrone Tarot, you know, which was restored, you know, um, to show, you know, how glorious it might have been. These show a quiet aged dignity, but it's not always easy to read because you can't always make out what the cards are.
the ones in silver seem to have suffered the most. I'm sorry, I'm not showing the whole card. I can't hold it that far. There we go. It's kind of hard to, sh to do it um, so that it shows the complete card. I got a tripod in front of me, so it's kind of awkward for me. So they do have this deck. If they have others like this, I don't have them, and I'm not even aware. I go to their website every now and then, and I'll, you know, just say historic tarot decks to see what, you know, their website will yield. And they didn't even show this deck. <laughs> you know, this deck didn't even pop up um, as a historic tarot deck. The historic tarot decks, when I do historic a historic tarot deck search on U.S. Game Systems, what will pop up is their golden tarot. Um which is like a compilation deck, you know, paintings done of the time, but not sourced from a tarot deck. And it's all in the Rider Waite, you know, the Waite Smith, Waite Coleman Smith tradition. So it's not historic, you know, even though the cards appear to be, you know, medieval period or Renaissance period, it's, you know, it's all in the, um, format of uh, Waits Coleman Smith. Another deck that pops up when you do a historic deck um, search on their website is the Medieval Scapini, which again is not an ancient deck. It's a modern day deck created by a modern day artist who um, gave a nod to the medieval period of time, but it's not an authentic historic deck. And there's another one, the Russian tarot. And again, all of these um, seem to follow, you know, like a Coleman Smith tradition. Now, the few decks in my collection, and as I said, I probably own at least 100, 150 decks you know, by U.S. Game Systems, Inc., but the only ones that I would consider historic, as in over 100 years old, um, would be the um, Tarot Classic, um, which I bought in, you know, in the 70s, and I was just a teenage girl, and when I bought it, it came, and I wasn't even knowledgeable enough to understand that when I bought it, it came in the wrong box. Um, in those, in this box is Shingats. I, you know, it's a mess. Um, it came in a Fournier box, but it was a U.S. You know, Game Systems Inc. deck. And in those days, um, tarot decks weren't even sold in the bookstores where I came from. The only place I could find tarot decks was in like novelty shops, like um, Spain's gift shops, right? And so I would go in there, like you know, other teenagers, and I would look for the tarot decks and if I was able to open a deck you know a box you know I wouldn't get past that stage because they were all in cellophane so what I presume is that you know somebody came in looked at the deck mixed up this deck's box with another box so somebody went home with the U.S. you know the, the tarot classic box and I came home with their Fournier which I ended up buying this deck also at another point um but um, that's a different publishing house. Okay, so but getting back to this, um, Tarot Classic, you know, I don't, I no longer have the book because at that time I wasn't a savvy kid and I don't think I saved the book. Um, but uh, from what I can see from other historic decks that I own, I'm pretty sure that the um, Tarot Classic deck probably was based on um, the Gassman Tarot. Um, certainly it's a Swiss, you know, it's got Swiss, a Swiss feel to it. If I can find the hanged man, we'll definitely see. Probably sometimes when I go through, yeah, there he is. Sometimes I was going to say, sometimes when you're looking for a card, it's the last one, right? Um, this card, you know, is a giveaway that it would be Swiss. And the colors make me think of, um, the Gassman. And the Ace of Cups in particular makes me think of Gassman. Of course, that's going to be one I can't find. Oh, wow. Okay, there it is. <laughs> um, some people say that the Tarot Classic um, is more closely related to Burdell. 
but I, I see Gassman. So, you know, but it, they're, you know, they're both Swiss decks. And so I think it's safe to say that, you know, it has characteristics of both the Gassman and the Burdell. And it is, and those decks are old, you know, so I would say that this is certainly not a facsimile deck, but it's based on older historic tarot decks. Um, another one, which I would consider historic, is the one J.J. Swiss, and this is the very first tarot deck that I ever owned. Um, and I bought this at Spain's gift shop. I was just a kid. <laughs> and um, I'm not sure what year the one J.J. Swiss came out originally. You know, not by U.S. Game Systems, Inc., but by its original manufacturer. I really... I, I'll read and then I'll put it down below what year it was, but it certainly is an older, an older Swiss deck. Um, again, a Pip style deck, which would be authentic to an historic tarot deck before the occultists, you know, um, came along beautiful deck. As a matter of fact, the very first tarot um, blog entry I ever made was about this deck. And um, I'm going to encourage you to read about it. I'll put the link for the um, article in this, in this uh, body of this description. And I do believe, according to my research, that this is the very first tarot deck that ever appeared on American television. And, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great story and I'm not going to give it away here because I'm, I'm, I want some traffic over at my website. So if you've been enjoying my videos and you, you know, um, have faith in me being a decent writer, I encourage you to check the link out that I'll put below for this particular article. And, um, you know, the one JJ Swiss is historic. It's a, a Besson style tarot deck. And I very conveniently have Jupiter and Juno who replaced the female Pope and Pope of the Italian decks that came out before it. And uh, aside from those that I've shown you, the Cary Visconti and the, um, you know, the Golden Tarot and the Luigi Scapini and um, the Russian Tarot. And this deck, I, I think it's, you know, the majority of decks that um, U.S. Game Systems put out um, were the occultist decks, you know, were the, were the decks that came, you know, after um, the occultists put their mark on tarot. Uh you know, let's face it, you know, the, the, the Waite Coleman Smith deck was their cash cow. In those days, it was called Rider Waite, you know, the Rider Waite Smith deck. And uh, I probably have, I don't know, a dozen versions, different colorations of this particular deck. And, you know, um, the Rider, the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck, or, you know, it wasn't even the first Waite Coleman deck I owned, the first one I ever owned was the Albano um, weight tarot deck came out in the 90s. So I read for 20 years with Pip style, you know, tarot decks, the, the, you know, the this one and this one um, before I ever bought um, a, 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 any version of the weight Coleman Smith deck. So this is the first weight Smith deck I owned. As I said, it's... Um, Albano weight versus Ryder. Oh, can't win. So the colors are different. And I imagine, you know, you could say this is a historically significant deck, um, but it's not historic in, in the sense of what I think of as historic as being medieval or 1700s or, you know, even 1800s. You know, this came out in 1909, right? Or... The Albano weight didn't come out in 1909, but the original Coleman weight Coleman Smith deck did. Um, and here's the one that most people are, are accustomed to seeing. And like I said, I didn't even own 
you know, a Coleman, uh, a Wade Coleman Smith deck until I was probably reading 20 or 25 years before I even got one of these. And it was, you know, kind of like learning a new language. It was easy, though. You know, it's an easier language. I mean, the meanings are on the cards, right? Um, you can definitely understand. <laughs> it's like, I, I, I think of it as tarot with training wheels. You know, you can tell what it means. The, the, the trump cards, you already know what they mean. You know, if you know Pip style you know, pip, pip style deck, you know, the trump cards, you know what they mean. But of course, different images do provoke, do evoke um, different, different feelings and different m meanings. Um, another, oh, I should have shown this one before I showed the Coleman, the Wade Coleman Smith decks. But the um, Oswald Worth deck um, is another one that is a uh, is you know historic based on the work of Oswald Worth. Now they produced a 78 card deck so that it could be read um, using pips, but he did not his deck did not include pips. And you know, although this has been criticized widely by people who say that the trump cards are not true. Um, and if you want to see, you know, truer pip car uh, trump cards, you can look at peruse my other videos because I have um, facsimile copies of his of his original, you know, Trump deck. Um, but at the time when it came out, it was the only game in town to, to see him, you know, and so I bought it. And um, And then, you know, he, you know, of course, there's like a deck like the Roland Nordic, which is, you know, maybe historically significant in recent years. And then, of course, um, you know, uh, Alistair Crowley's Thoth deck, which I didn't even buy until sometime in the 2000s, you know, maybe 2015 or something like that. And the Hermetic Tarot which can also be said to be a historic deck. But, you know, I don't think of those decks as historic decks. So I'm including U.S. Game Systems, Inc. in this playlist of publishers who create historic tarot decks um, by virtue of the, you know, massive amount of cataloging that went on in the, in the encyclopedic books. And the few, you know, um, historic decks that I have by them. But... Um, by and large, I think that their bread and butter was the occultist tarot decks, and that's what I think they focused on. Um, if they had historic tarot decks, man, I would have been buying them, <laughs> you know, because that's what I do. That's what I'm into is the historic decks. So I hope this video has um, been helpful to you. If you ever want me to peruse the catalog, the uh, encyclopedia for any, you know, deck that... Um, you need information on I'd be happy to do it so just ask below and until next time stay well friends peace